when you, when you uh, talk about the dangers of root canals and that, that have happened over many, many years, are there safer alternatives now if we're in a position where we need uh, something like that, where, oh, where yeah. we have a dead tooth? Very definitely, yeah. I'm giving a talk in a few months called Advance to the Rear because in the past there was a technology that took care of those problems. It was called extraction. I mean, if you've got a ruptured appendix, you're going to fill it with wax and put a gold crown on it? you got the same bacteria there, mm -hmm. only the ones in the mouth may be worse. You remove it. And then the thing I can't understand, patients 50 years ago understood if you had a tooth removed, you have a partial denture, you have a bridge, you have something put in there. Today, almost anybody that I mentioned, you know, root canal teeth, if you're, I mean, do root canal teeth, the question is, do, root canal, do all root canal teeth have to be removed? And the answer is no, only in those people who are interested in their health. If they're interested in their health, they can do what we did 50 years ago, take the tooth out. Only dentists are taught to leave the membrane, the periodontal ligament, in place, in the bone which is like delivering a baby and leaving the placenta in. Not good. But if you do it properly, if, 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 there are a series of procedures that need to be done. You don't just take hold of it and yank it out. Few other procedures, because as soon as the dentist touches the tooth with cold steel, which means the forceps, bacteria in the bloodstream going where? Every place blood goes. You poke your finger, you get blood. Big toe, you get blood. So it can go anywhere and everywhere and does. But the bacteria have um, something called chemotaxis. It's a magnetic attraction, a fatal attraction, if you would, for specific tissues. Some bacteria like the heart, some like the liver, some like the lungs, some like the brain but they have access to the whole body. So it's, if you're interested in health, you don't just go to a dentist and say, it hurts and take it out. But when, or this kind of leads up to a case I was involved in not too long ago where a fellow had his root canals taken out and he had some plastic temporary bridges put in and this was done in, a, in another country, actually. And uh, one tooth kind of began to get a little sore. And I said, okay, close down very, very slowly. Where do you hit? Well, on that tooth first. I said, okay, so the temporary is a little high. It takes the dentist and mm -hmm. then the teeth will come together the way they're supposed to. So I called a dentist I knew, and I said, uh, would you just adjust the bite there? Yeah, yeah, sure, fine, send him in, that's okay. So he calls for an appointment, and the secretary says, well, what is it? Well, I got this tooth, you know, it's kind of sent to you, and I bite down and said, oh, you need a root canal. I'll go ahead and schedule you for a root canal. Well, he had just had five root canals taken out because he had some real severe problems and he was coming out of them and he understood very well that the root canals had created these problems. There is no way he's going to get a root. He says, no, I think the bite needs to be adjusted. He says, no, I'm quite sure you need a root canal. Go ahead and come in and see the doctor and we'll do the root canal. So why do we need root canals? Quota. That's hmm. not very diagnostic when a secretary on the telephone says, you need a root canal, I will schedule you for it, and the doctor will do it whether he looks in the mouth first or not. It's hmm. just, am I getting a little biased there? I guess I am, because the only people I talk to are the ones who have problems and who did not have problems before they had the dentistry done. Hmm. So my objective now is to inform the public because I tried to, well, I did inform the Dental Association about mercury and that seemed to alter my life a whole lot and I'm not going through that again. They took everything I had. I don't have anything to lose now so I'm not afraid to tell the truth. 
I was interviewed by a religious station not too long ago, and the guy said, uh, do you mind if I start the program off with a prayer? I said, no, that's fine by me. You know, I know the guy up there. He's okay, so you can talk to him. So he gave this prayer, and it ended with, uh, teach us that, um, um, what is the quotation, something about, find the truth and it shall make you free. And I said, do you mind if I add the Huggins twist to that? And he said, no, go right ahead. And I said, speak the truth, and it sets you in the crosshairs. So this is what I am beginning now, having a massive amount of data instead of just 12 cases that I took to the Dental Association. I have a massive amount of data now on the frequency at which these bacteria are found, the data from the literature that explains what these bacteria do, and connecting the blood chemistries, the symptoms, and the dentistry. And then we have developed a technology that's a little bit complex. But 40 years ago, I made a lot of mistakes in trying to treat people for dental toxicity. I don't make those mistakes anymore. I teach dentists how to do it without making those mistakes and using the blood chemistry as a guide to how do you treat the patient? Is there a specific treatment? Yeah. From Tom, Dick, and Harry, we have three different treatments. Who tells me how to do it? Their blood. <laughs>